Welcome to uh, EHJ Today. I'm William Wines from Belgium and joining are uh, Pam Douglas from Duke University, North Carolina. Pam has served as uh, president of the ACC. Welcome. And also uh, Professor Jean Marco from Toulouse, France. Uh, Prof Marco is the founder and honorary chairman of PCR. We are together to discuss a very interesting study by Dr. Gl Douglas and collaborators on the use of um, FFR and CT combined to um, diagnose coronary artery disease in patients. So Pam, can you tell us a bit about the uh, objectives and the design of the study? Well, the platform study was designed to test whether or not using uh, FFR information derived from CT angiography uh, versus usual care, standard care, would reduce the rate of not finding obstructive disease at a coronary angiogram, in other words, a non-obstructive or normal coronary angiogram, uh, and would do so safely uh, with no, no risk to patients. The reason this is important is that other studies that have looked at uh, comparing approaches to diagnostic testing, like the recent PROMISE and Scott Hart trials, compared anatomic versus functional approaches and found that while CT improved some processes of care, it was also associated with a near doubling of the rate of catheterization and a 50% increase with the rate of revascularization, but no change, no improvement in clinical events. So the platform study was designed to see whether the addition of um, computational modeling of FFR using this non-invasive method would improve that record over anatomic information. The trial was designed as a prospective cohort study uh, and the primary endpoint was in patients with a planned invasive catheterization who were allocated either to usual care, go ahead with the catheterization, or FFR CT guided care where they had a CT and if there was a stenosis, a modest stenosis of at least 30% or higher, they would have uh, an FFR calculated using supercomputer big data techniques. These were supplied to the sites. The sites made decisions about what they wanted to do um, based on that. There was also a non-invasive test arm which was very similar, usual non-invasive testing or FFR CT testing. Before moving to the, um, the description of uh, your key findings, um, can you say a few words about the CTFFR technique in brief? Sure. It uses conventional CT images that can be, you know, as long as they're carefully acquired, but conventional images, it doesn't have to be um, anything fancy. Um, they are segmented and then processed uh, through um, a modeling of 3D blood flow again using the computational fluid dynamics uh, to approximate what we would see with invasive FFR. And so the pressure and flow data, you know, under modeled conditions of hyperemia, the pressure and flow data expressed as the same sort of numbers uh, as FFR. And it's, um, the results are, in the platform study, were done centrally. And the, the results were available to the care team within 24 to 48 hours for rapid usual care sorts of processes of decision making. So it gives you the functional and anatomic information in one go in the three vessels, so it to speak, non-invasively. Exactly. exactly, and it is the only technique right now that, that does that. Okay, so what were your key findings? Right, so in the planned catheterization group, all of the ones who were usual care went to catheterization, but actually after the CTFFR information was uh, obtained, 61% of the catheterizations were canceled. So a marked reduction in actual performance of the angiograms, um, but a very actually similar rate of revascularization. So no increase in revascularization. Um, uh, and uh, none of those patients who had that angiograms canceled had any adverse events. Now in the planned non-invasive group, um, most patients in that group in either care arm did not undergo catheterization a very low rate of catheterization, low rate of finding no obstructive disease, and it was similar in both arms. So it really didn't make too much difference in the, uh, in the Promise and Scott Hart-like population. But in those patients headed to the cath lab, it made a huge difference. We also did a number of sensitivity analyses around that, um, that, that 73 reduction from 
73% of finding no obstructive disease in the usual care arm to just 12% of those undergoing a catheterization in the FFRCT guided arm. And it, it stayed the same regardless of any subgroup that we looked at, whether we looked at best practices or good images or, or anything else. Great. Let me turn to Professor Marco. Um, Jean, what do you think are the strengths of, uh, of this, uh, this study? I think uh, the first uh, strength of this study is to select uh, effect effectiveness evaluation as a primary endpoint. This is a very pragmatic endpoint and this is really one of the questions of the community, cardiology community in daily practice. I think this is for me the most uh, uh, strength of the study. And the second one is a method. I like the method with a with a two court of consecutive patient. This reflect daily practice and daily practice in Europe because uh, 11 center and uh, are coming from uh, Europe, aside oh. from Europe, oh. Europe. Mm -hmm. is correct? Oh, from Europe, yes. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, for me the, the, the most important. And then the third one is really based on robust statistical analysis. Do you see any weaker or weaker points? Well, we can say that it's not a randomized trial. But I believe that uh, due to the quality of the method, the, the consecutive court and the quality of the, and the, the, of the statistical analyze, this is not a matter of discussion. Then the second weakness is maybe but it's secondary and bond, the sample size and the uh, follow-up duration do not allow strong conclusion about uh, the clinical outcome. You agree, Pam? Yes, I agree. The study is actually continuing for a full one year of follow-up. These are the results at 90 days, so the early results. So you did concentrate in the primary endpoint on the resource utilization and the uh, effectiveness? Yeah. We con this uh, presentation is on effectiveness. The, the uh, quality of care and costs are, are the subject of a different presentation. will actually be presented at TCT uh, in next month. So what would be you know, the key take-home message compared to what was known prior to this, uh, this study? I think the key take-home message is that we may need different strategies for different patients with chest pain. So the initial presentation before non-invasive non testing, we found similar results now in Promise and Scott Hart in platform with anatomic versus functional testing. But this population of patients who were headed for the cath lab, there's a very large percent of them that will not have obstructive disease found in the cath lab even under the best of circumstances in randomized control trials. And FFRCT offers an alternative tool to keep those patients who don't need that invasive procedure out of the cath lab and to do so very safely. Yeah, that's a great finding. Now, uh, my mentor always said, you know, what is the pretest likelihood of having disease in those patients? Well, you know, we, we are testing patients with a relatively low pretest likelihood of disease. But that represents usual care in, the, in Europe, in the United States. And it was very hard. We talked about that um, with the PROMISE study. We also talked about it here. The pretest likelihood is roughly 50% in these patients. But the actual prevalence of disease when you do the angiogram is much lower, on the order of 10 or 20%. And it's become so hard now to take uh, middle-aged people with multiple risk factors and some symptoms and say, you know, we can't investigate. Uh, we, and we also have no data whether that's safe or not. We have data that the event rate is very low in these patients, regardless of the investigation, but there's always an investigation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Professor Marco, what do you think? Is this approach ready for clinical practice? Well, I have a question before to give an answer what is about uh, the specificity and, and sensitivity, because there is in the study there is some group of patients with uh, negative or FFRCT mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. normal coronary angiogram. So maybe you can give uh, some information on uh, some figure on, the, sure. on this point. Mm -hmm. there, there are several questions embedded in that. 
in the validation studies that have been done, there have been three validation studies published, and the sensitivity uh, overall is 86% uh, specificity of 79% versus invasive FFR, mm -hmm. which of course itself can have, has a little bit of variability, but uh, so that's important. Uh, another important limitation is that uh, FFR can't always be done on every CT, whether it's because of motion artifact, which was the most recent, most common reason in this trial. It was about 10%. Uh, it could not have that calculated. So that is an issue. And also, we, the studies have not been done in those with prior revascularization or recent myocardial infarction. Uh, so that patient population is, is still uh, unknown. Is still unknown. Um, on, on the other hand, I think for most patients, uh, it, it does provide very good information. The patients that that 12 percent that Professor Marco is referring to, uh, some of those were patients whose FFRCT uh, didn't show a need for catheterization, but the physician, again, this is a very pragmatic study, the physician said, I, I need to know on this new test, I'm not. I need to know in this patient, and that's okay. Sometimes there is a patient. Sometimes the patient wants to know, um, uh, but others were borderline. Uh, for example, had an FFR CT of a 0.81 or 0.82, and a 50 to 70 percent LID lesion. That's a very hard patient to defer mm -hmm. and say, no, we we shouldn't do the. And who is symptomatic? Again to say, no, we shouldn't go and get the gold standard uh, invasive FFR information. So to conclude, and thank you very much for this uh, uh, great discussion and very interesting study, would it be fair to state that um, until you have the results of the outcome, clinical outcome in these patients, um, could we recommend that if colleagues are using CT during their non-invasive workup, they better combine it with this FFR computational method? I think that's fair. I think I think these results combined with the promise results showing um, an excess of catheterizations and, and interventions, but no improvement in outcomes, um, would suggest that if you use the anatomic information alone, you may do too many procedures. Mm. And but the uh, FFR information helps um, actually dramatically uh, reduces that problem. Which is what FFR has been showing. Yes invasively, but the opportunity to have that information at hand non-invasively is perhaps a major advance. But particularly if you're doing the CT anyway, it's, there's, the patient does no additional testing. It, it's just a software um, calculation so analysis. Yes. Available. Yes. Great approach. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Great work. Thank you, Pam.